Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm having the opportunity today to work on an old reel. Uh, this reel was made in France. It comes to me from uh, Dick in Philadelphia. This is the Alder number four, A-L-D-E-R number four. It's a very large saltwater fishing reel, so Chris will probably be interested in that. Uh, Chris is a longtime viewer who's been taking up collecting French reels. Uh, and uh, we're going to take it apart as best we can. I, I haven't worked on one of these. Uh, so we're going to kind of go as we can to see what we can do. And it uh, looks like we have some unique things. We have a shielded uh, spool so that the water that uh, hits the spool uh, will roll off the side rather than go into gearing. This is a manual reel. It doesn't have a, a trip bail. It has a uh, an arm instead. It looks like easy access. And uh, let's get started see what we can do. So we're going to start by removing the... Uh, the external pieces, but before we did that, I have this little thing in the corner here I wanted to show you. Uh, Dick also sent this one in. This is a center pin reel. It's a Berkeley reel. It's entirely plastic. It's their model uh, 500. There's a little bit of a drag, which just means you pull the center pin in a little bit more, a little bit less uh, to tighten down on that. And very simply, the uh, there's no gearing. Basically, you just rotate this acting as an eccentric, the handle. You rotate that to gather the, gather the line and of course you would let the line out the other way and that uh, center pin is the drag force as well. So thank you Dick for uh, sharing that with us. So let's get over to that alder number four and as we do take off those external pieces. I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel, everybody who's playing a role in terms of keeping us safe during this pandemic. Your efforts truly are appreciated. I thank each and every one of you for what you do every day uh, to try to keep us safe and restore those that have contacted the disease to health. That's first responders, that's essential personnel in the supply chain, that's the police, fire, emergency, EMT, as well as the teachers and everyday folks like the people that work mass transportation and the like. Thank you. All right, uh, spool cap or jag adjuster with a spring on it. These all go into my parts tray. I use the bottom of a jug for that. And I just keep that to gathering my pieces. I haven't worked on this reel, full disclosure, <clears throat> before. <laughs> so uh, it's the first time and I like to take pictures and I recommend you take pictures as you're disassembling your reels as well, just so that you know the orientation of the pieces and the parts that come off and uh, how to put them back together again. So we have a spool assembly, we're gonna take that off. It looks like there's a big old washer in there, there is. Um, the rest of it looks like, um, that's just a press pin there. There's no internal um, drag washers there. There's a washer here that's probably acting as a drag. Looks like we have some kind of corroded metal there. And one of the biggest uh, spool uh, nuts that I've ever seen. Looks like it's on upside down too. I don't know. No, I guess it's okay. I uh, brought the adjuster wrench out for that. So I'm going to put that brass washer right back into the, the cavity of that uh, spool so that I know exactly where to find that when we, uh, when we go to put this back together again. There are a couple of interesting things I've noted here. I don't know if that's an oil port. It may be. I have a similar one over here. Couldn't find the schematics on it. I do have some kind of a hold down pin probably for the, um, uh, the pinning gear and uh, we'll get a little bit further along We'll go figure what those things are. So take pictures along the way. Uh, go slowly, uh, especially if you haven't worked on a reel like this, and I haven't. So uh, we're just going to be patient. We're going to take our time, and uh, we're going to try and document as much as we can in terms of where the pieces and the parts came from and go to. And uh, we should be able to clean this reel up, give it a service, and give everybody a little bit of an education in terms of what this reel is. I just switched to a micro screwdriver, the blade on my... Uh, my other screwdriver was a little bit too large. I'm putting these screws into the parts tray and as I do I'm just grouping them because I want to make sure that those three screws are the same size. Uh, if they are they're interchangeable, if they're not, well notice where the longer or the shorter screw came from because when you go to reinstall you're going to need to do that. Those three happen to be the same size so no worries. And I'm just going to try and get the case off. This has got good paint, so I don't want to go banging things around too much. And uh, back of it's a little dirty, 
And it looks like we have a crosswind block that um, is similar to a lot of the ones that we see out there. It's probably riding on a stud. I'm not seeing how it's attached at the moment, but I'm... Okay, so I just went and grabbed a cotton swab. There's a separation, but it appears that what I thought were studs that were kind of snap-on studs appear to be small screws. So this is a good point to tell you. You want to be patient. You don't want to force anything. It'd be real easy to see a separated case and go and try and jam a, a screwdriver or a wedge or something in there, assuming that these things are uh, studs when, in fact, they're screws, and you'd wind up breaking the block, and then you're done. I don't imagine it's... You, I don't imagine you can run down to your local nuts and bolts and supplier and just uh, go grab a replacement cross block for this. Well, actually, what's going to separate the axle is going to come out. It's not going to separate. Okay, so there we go. We pulled the axle out. The, those two screws went right into the axle shaft. I'm just going to put that into the side for a moment. Big block. Not hard to figure out. It is a crosswind block. It rides on a stud. We're good with that. Now we want to go up top, and that's one heck of a nut. And uh, we're going to use an adjustable wrench because I don't have a socket that big. And uh, it tightens re reverse. It's a counter-threaded screw, so we're going to take that off. Okay, and there's a little washer, it appears, inside here that's going to grip your shaft, so make sure that that stays there. Looks like it's welded into the, the cavity of that, so there you go. Next up then would be this little guard. Here's our um, manual bail setup. Here's our cavity. Here's our drag, uh, drag washer, or a drag washer, or a cork uh, holding pin. Now I saw this over here, so I'm going to assume this is a set. A set screw that's holding that pinion gear in place. I'm going to assume this is an oil port. So let's go back to those screwdrivers again, find the one that has the closest fit. You don't want to go too small because you will butterfly the uh, set screw. And if that's the case, you'll never get it out. Yep, so this one is similar to the way that the axle shaft has been held in. And we can just remove that whole assembly. And right now, Chris is knowing I'm probably the luckiest guy in the world in terms of getting these things out without, uh, without them failing. So. Uh, Sometimes you just get lucky. So that's an oil uh, cloth, if you will. It's a felt washer that's on there. You have the felt washer. I'm going to assume that we don't have burrings in here. We have our bushing. That hole is where that set screw is going to go. We have our pinion gear. And yes, that was an oil port there, so you don't need to remove that screw. Uh, I'm hearing a click. So you want to reverse this. You want to get that clicker in the off position so that you don't push the dog out when you go to disassemble. And now we should be able to just get the main gear right through the case. There we go. So Dick, your, uh, your case is very clean. We're just going to get rid of some of that little bit of old grease in there. This has kind of got a little interesting piece. For those of you that may be working on this, who lost that dog spring and are wondering where in the world that spring goes, one part of it rests up against the, the, uh, the post here, wraps around several times on the post, and comes in behind and hooks in on the back end of the neck of this. So that's how that one works. And that's why generally I recommend that you um, just um, leave it in place and, and turn it off, because that looks like uh, a whole other carnival of fun to, uh, to try and get that off and replace it. All right. I took most of that off with a cotton swab, just to clean out the cavity with a little balance of that. And this one, uh, this one's been cleaned. I'll just uh, wipe down the main gear and we're going to just go right back in 
and uh, do what uh, was done before a long time ago. Get the grease off the back of this. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease in support of this reel. Not because it's a uh, pen or anything, it's just it's uh, fishing reel grease and that's what you need to do when you go and do your, your reel service and repair. Made in France on the back of our reel. You don't need to get too much on here, there's nothing sliding there. Alright, we can take this and put that back in. That's in the bushing. Bushings are... Oops, before we do that, let's get the face of it. It's a bit easier to, to do this. Check the teeth on the gear. This is a beautifully constructed gear. There's a little bit of old grease there. We'll get that out. And we're going to go ahead and just re-grease the teeth on this. And you don't have to get grease in every tooth, but, but get enough of it. And you do need to get it on the inside here. That's where that cross line block is going to ride. All right, this can go back in. Now we can uh, do the same thing here. If you notice that there was any kind of debris of that, go ahead and take a, uh, a, a brush and clean the channels. There's just some old grease here. We'll get that stuff out. Wipe off any excess. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall. Get some on the shaft where it's going to ride through that bushing. And get some on the teeth that are going to intersect. Alrighty. Now, I didn't take a good picture here. And I'm a little bit confused. So I stopped my video for a moment just to make sure that I had the orientation rather than guessing. So we've greased the pinion gear. This little shim washer does belong on the bottom. I went back to my video and I referenced that. Then our collar goes on. And when we go to seat that, that collar is going to ride flush with this, uh, this little oil felt. So you can put it now, put it later. Let's just put it on now. And we'll make sure we oil that when we... Um, complete the process here. Be careful not to tear it, it's only felt. Alright, that's our stack. And what I also did, I just uh, may have been off camera for this, but I did uh, remove that oil screw. I confirmed there was an oil screw so that I can center a pick to make sure that I have the through hole kind of matched. So this is going to go in like this. When your felt washer is running flush with the top, you're good. And actually, you can sight it now through that uh, through that oil slot now. So I have it on that side. I did notice there's an opposing offset on the other side. So all I should have to do now is just turn this around, grab my micro screwdriver and tighten it in. There you go. So worth noting. Also worth noting, I did put a, a, a spray of penetrating oil on there before I remove this oil part uh, screw. It's also a set screw too. Notice that it has that little dimple there so it'll, it's going to hold that assembly in from the other side as well. So let's get this back in. It's a thumb screw so you can pretty much tighten it by hand and then just use the appropriate screwdriver for that last turn or two. Okay, that's the, uh, the mechanism. We should be doing well there. I'm going to go ahead and set that clicker on now, just to make sure everything spins nicely before we, we go any further. So we noticed on this one that this is uh, the next piece in. This is the cross wind block. Again, you want to clear both sides of that. You want to clean out the interior. Use a cotton swab for that. Clean out any old grease that's on there. And. Uh, Next up, I believe in the process, we want to get oil onto that felt. I'm using a fishing reel oil for that. It's an aftermarket product called Real X. And we want to go ahead and put that little surround with the um, washer on top. That's the cap that goes over. There's one flat side on this bar. Looks like the letter D, and that's where your manual mount goes. Then we have our 
spool shield. Not exactly sure what they're calling that, but I'll call it a spool shield. Then we have our nut, and remember this was a reverse thread. So this one's going to go on counterclockwise or lefty tighty, if you will. All right, there's a little compression washer that's holding the axle shaft, which I just need to locate. Convenient parts tray, let's get that out of the way. I just want to make sure that I get that centered before I complete the. Uh, there we go. I want to make sure I get that in so that when I tighten this, I'm not tightening down on that, uh, that little washer there, which could be out of place and then I can damage it. Sorry if you don't have a lot of uh, view on that. Okay, I'm going to take my adjustable wrench because I didn't have a, uh, a big old socket for that. All right, our block goes in. Remember, we have the slot that's going to ride over that uh, the stud. So we're going to get some, some grease into that slot and onto the face of it. And then just like what we did with the other one, we're going to want to sight this Get as best you can with those two, uh, two little dimples there. Line it up. And as you're coming through, you'll be able to see where those dimples are. And I think I've got them sighted up. I'm, I'm looking through here. We have the two set screws then. And they go all the way down before they actually engage that shaft. So that shaft may spin. We're going to just make sure that uh, as we get to a certain point, if it's not seated in all the way, you're going to know it. But I believe I've got it because that kind of looks like where we started from <clears throat> when we went to do this uh, retraction. One more. So Dick, beautiful reel, like it. Thank you for uh, trusting me with it and thank you for uh, sending it to me so that we could work on it and we could show everybody what this reel was made out of. Overall, very nice reel. All right, second one in or going in. This is a good time to tell you if you like this kind of uh, video, please subscribe to my channel. I post frequently. I do all kinds of reels, old reels, new reels, spinning reels, conventional reels, bait casters and the like. So if you like this, uh, please subscribe. If you subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way it'll let you know when I'm posting and you'll be able to see uh, which ones you may enjoy. And uh, if that being the case, you can, uh, can watch along as I kind of work on the reels that come into my shop. All right, handle's going on now because I want to test this before I put that cover back on. I want to make certain that everything's going according to plan. All right, we found out that this was a uh, oil port as well, so you don't need to take the whole reel off to oil the essentials. If you pull this one, you'll get the handle oiled. If you pull this one, you'll get the axle shaft and the, um, uh, the pin and gear service. Let's give it a ride. Look at that. That pretty reel. All right, that's working the way it should work. So we can go back up top now. Grab the spool. There's nothing going on, as I mentioned, inside the spool. So let's go ahead and put the spool on. And this has an anti-reverse dog, so that's what you saw me doing there, was playing to make sure that I got the clearance for the anti-reverse dog. Again, something looking like the letter D. You got to arrange the flat spot on this washer with the flat spot on the shaft. Kind of looking like that. And we have our tension adjuster, aka a drag knob. Tighten that down. Okay, then I just have to kind of reversing the process here, right? I want to just clean off that old grease that's on this side plate, insert the side plate. Take the three screws, which I know are identical, so get them started. 
and we'll be on our way. If you, uh, if you like the video, please indicate that uh, by hitting that like button. If you have any questions on this wheel or any wheel in particular, uh, go ahead and uh, leave them in the comments section. Most mornings I'll try and answer the uh, questions from the night before. If I can help you with a particular project or uh, answer a question about uh, a particular reel, if I know the answer, I'm certainly going to try and do that for you. And uh, if you uh, finally, if you like Dick and you have a reel that, want, that you want service, but you're either too busy to do it or you're just uh, not confident enough to do it, which you can hopefully get gain the confidence through the videos. Uh, but if you're not confident and you would like me to work on it, uh, send me a note to my email on the business card that follows. I'll be happy to uh, give you that uh, information. Alrighty, last one up. Give it a final test drive there. And get this reel back to date. Okay, nothing left but the test drive then. Beautiful. Alder number four, made in France, 50s or 60s, manual bail, beautiful reel, turning nice and smooth now that it's got a, a little bit of a tune up in there. We showed you how to do it, take it apart and service it, I hope you've enjoyed it. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.